It seems pretty early for the Veep stakes to begin. Ted Cruz actually kicked it off by naming a running mate. Uh, Carly Fiorina doesn't seem to be helping him much. And there is this question about whether Senator Cruz is ever going to be in a position to actually need a running mate at the Cleveland convention. So that's a story, not much of a story right now. But Hillary Clinton and the Veep stakes is very interesting in terms of the way she is using the press. Now, this all began uh, days ago with an authorized leak, had every earmark of the way campaigns want to get a message out. It went to the New York Times. And it said in very dramatic fashion that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and their top advisors were compiling a list and seriously thinking about 15 to 20 people who could be her running mate in the extremely likely uh, outcome that she gets the Democratic nomination. And it actually put names out there, according to these unnamed sources. Those names included uh, Tim Kaine, the Virginia senator, Mark Warner, the Virginia senator. Who else have we got here? Sherrod Brown, the senator from Ohio. Uh, former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick and Tom Perez, who, if you don't know, is the Labor Secretary. Now, there's a very specific reason that this is done, and I don't know that any of these people is going to be seriously considered. They might be. Um, and the idea that, you know, this is beginning in earnest, well, let's face it, the reason this story was put out there quite deliberately by the Clinton campaign was to give the impression that the primaries are over, that she's looking past the Bernie battle and she's already deciding who she's going to run with in the fall. And the press kind of falls for this because we love the beep sticks. We have an insatiable appetite for this kind of endless speculation. But it didn't end with those names. And by the way, when politicians put out the names, oh, I'm certainly willing to consider so-and-so, you, it's a way of flattering other politicians. It's also a way of sending a signal to constituency groups. So former governor of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, says, look, I'm considering a prominent African-American. Tom Perez, nobody knows who he is. He's the labor secretary, but he's also a Hispanic. But in that same Times piece and in a separate interview that campaign chief John Podesta did with the Boston Globe, Hillary's very interested in considering a woman. There will be women on this list. Well, that sends a signal, obviously, to a very large uh, constituency. And as the campaign knew, it started all of this chatter and speculation and analysis about Elizabeth Warren. Now, it seems to me to be kind of a long shot that Elizabeth Warren would end up on the ticket. She's a first-term senator with no foreign policy experience. She hasn't endorsed Hillary. Do do they really want a ticket with two women? Who knows? But it very uh, clearly sends another kind of signal, which is, what does Hillary need to do right now? She needs to appeal to younger liberal voters who love Bernie Sanders, who don't like her or lukewarm toward her, or viewers part of the establishment who view her too close to Wall Street. Elizabeth Warren solves all those problems, according to some liberal pundits, because she has been sort of a lifelong advocate of taking on Wall Street and battling for consumers and all of that. Whether or not she's actually a good running mate or would be a suitable running mate doesn't matter. The fact that she's been considered would make all the Bernie fans think, well, maybe Hillary's not so bad if she's willing to at least Um, weigh Elizabeth Warren as her possible number two. So it's uh, only early May now. This is a game that anybody can play. The press, of course, is throwing in its own names. This happens every four years. It's all fun and games, but it's really quite serious when it comes to the kind of signals the Hillary campaign is sending, and the press is falling for it.